Let's see something else we haven't done in a long time. Boom! Good morning everybody and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be starting a new series. It's gonna be the next Powerwall build and it's gonna be Powerwall 2.0. I know everybody says that, but that's technically what it's gonna be. And pretty much the only thing we're gonna be doing today is probably taking down and removing the old Powerwall system. Pretty much the system that kind of started this channel. Sad, I know. I have decided I'm not gonna be using this system anymore. Uh, again, I didn't have any problems with it. However, there's always a potential for problems with lithium ion. I guess the biggest reason for me removing it and not using it is because I have all this stuff in my house. In the summertime, it can get over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and in the wintertime, it can be I don't know, 20, 30 below zero. I don't have a shed or anything like that to put all this stuff in. I'm not gonna build one and insulate it and you know do that whole thing. Um, I'm just gonna keep everything right here in my basement. So if there was a problem with the lithium ion cells, I really don't have a good way to put that out and I really don't wanna lose my house. That's the main reason why we're gonna be removing the 18650s and switching over to lithium iron phosphate. As you all know, lithium iron phosphate cells are are really damn safe. I've actually punctured not these particular cells, but other lithium iron phosphate cells, and they just kind of release a little bit of smoke, which isn't good for you. So if there was a problem ever, I would rather have that than a full-blown fire. Okay, anyway, the new batteries are gonna be the lithium iron phosphate cells that I bought from Alibaba pretty much a year and a half ago that I haven't done anything with. All right, so in today's video, it's gonna be video one. The only thing we're really gonna be doing is tearing down the old system. We're basically gonna be disconnecting the batteries and then probably disassembling the control panels. It's kind of huge and in the way. We need all that stuff out so we can put all the new stuff in. But before we do that, we could take a look at the Batrium screen here real quick. Again, I haven't used these batteries in a couple of months because I've been testing out that Rhino battery from Big Battery. Hopefully you can see this all on the screen, but anyway, the cells are sitting at 3.68 and 3.72. 56.5 state of charge and the voltage is 51.78. I'm gonna go back on grid real quick because I don't know how much sun we're actually gonna get. There we go. Alrighty, so over here in the power wall area, this is the DIY 18650 power wall. It's a 14S 100P, you know, all made out of recycled cells, which took me for freaking ever to get. <laughs> This thing literally took me forever to build just because it took me so long to find batteries. Anyway, this is gonna be the system that we're gonna be removing. And we're also going to remove this little tower, control panel tower that I built. Mainly, I had the Batrium on that top screen. The two PCM 60Xs were just sitting there waiting to be used. I never actually used them because I've got all my solar connected to the grow watt inverter. And then all of this right here, I had all of my solar and stuff on there. Right below that is my shunt trip breaker. And then I've got a on and off switch, which actually turn on and off the UPS in there. That's what I used to use for my inverter. And then the next switch is a light switch which I have LED lights, you know, going all the way around. And then I put a fan switch in there just in case I needed to add fans at a later date. And then right next to that is my emergency stop switch, which is connected to the Batrium. And then the Batrium is connected to the shut trip breaker. So if I push that, you know, it'll shut down everything. Last year I pulled this off and pulled the solar out and just kind of threw it over into this little tiny box right here, kind of in preparation to remove all this stuff, but I was so busy at work, that's pretty much as far as I got. So I think what we're gonna be doing today is mainly taking down the control panel tower and disconnecting the batteries and moving all this stuff away. All right, so let's get to it. All right, first thing I need to do is move over all of these batteries. 
so I can even get to this stuff. This one I've got on some little two by fours and stuff down here so the little rolly cart thingy doesn't break and fall over because this thing weighs like a freaking ton. Maybe we can use this for the thumbnail. Am I recording? Yeah. Oh, do you guys want to see how the emergency shutdown works? We can push a little stop button. I don't remember how I have everything wired up, of course, because it's been forever ago, but if I hit the emergency stop button, these lights over here should shut off, but maybe they'll stay on. I honestly don't remember. Anyway, we're going to push the emergency stop button and that will trip the shut trip breaker. And what that does is just cut all power. Ready? Here we go. Boom. Yep, it did. There you go. Another reason why I'm kind of looking forward to getting this out of the system and out of the way is because this, even though it is a server rack and a short server rack, it takes up way too much room and I'm kind of going for the whole compact power wall. Yep. This is a portable power wall if you guys want to wear. I can actually, oh, there's the doorbell. I got my new chair, because my other one sucks. Cool, new ergo chair. Now I can sit. Now, did you guys know that this is technically a mobile power wall? Because this server rack is on wheels and I can move it around pretty much anywhere, like away from the wall. I need to get to the back side of the power wall and I'm gonna pull the fuses, which I can't really get the camera back here just so there's no power right up here. Alrighty, fuses are pulled. So here's what I had in the back. This is just those blade style fuses, which you just pull this down and it disconnects. I just wanted to make sure all the power was disconnected before I start touching things. All right, we're gonna check voltages real quick uh, to make sure everything's turned off. All right, so this one is 0 0.027, so nothing. And this one says 2.35. What would be that? I have no idea. Well, I'm not sure why that has 2.35, but we'll just be careful. All right, so the next thing I need to do is pull off some of these cover plates here just so we can get access to everything. All right, so this does have wires attached to it, obviously. I did a really good job of putting this together. It sucks that I have to take it all apart. That's okay. Alrighty, now we have all the switches disconnected. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect all of these main lugs from the bus bars and from the shunt trip breaker. The last ones we have are these guys over here. And some of these, actually I better check the voltage because I might have 24 volts on there from the uh, from the shunt trip power. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right, so the blue and gray wire do have 24 volts because that was kind of an emergency thing and it always needed 24 volts. So I'm gonna have to get some tape for that one. Now we are completely disconnected. I don't even know how I got this thing in here, to be honest. All right, well, I don't really know how I got this in here. I probably put it in over here and then slid it over. Obviously, I can't do that anymore, can I? Ooh. Maybe I can. Need you to go around the stairs. There we go. I got it. Uh oh. 
am I caught on? All right. Oh, that almost fell off. That would have been bad. <clears throat> That's gonna be really loud. I wonder if I can wheel it out on these things. We're gonna give it a try. Come on, you can do it. Pivot, pivot. Ah, and we'll bring it right over here so we can disassemble it. All right, well, it looks like I can disassemble most of this stuff from the back side, so I think that's what I'll do. Two charge controllers removed. And now we got the shunt trip breaker, and I used copper pipe for spacing on here. All right, shunt trip breaker and all the bus bars and stuff are removed. And now we have all the solar fuses and surge suppression removed. All right, that's pretty much everything that I need off of this little rack here. I'll probably uh, give all this stuff back to Andy, the recycler that I got it from the first time around. Boom, all done. All righty. Now, I think we're just going to at least push this over there and maybe disconnect some of this wiring. How about that? Let's do that. Mobile power wall coming through. I do remember messing with this all the time. I mean, look at this. Boom! Look how clean that looks. And I'm gonna get rid of it, or at least tear it apart. Ah, the old Smart UPS 3000 XL. Good times. Let me turn it around. Look at all that cleanness. Clean! And I'm gonna take it all apart. So yeah, that's where the fuses were that I took apart earlier. So basically I'm gonna disassemble all this stuff up here since I don't need it there anymore. Some of this stuff will be used in the new stuff like the Batrium. Like all these guys might be used. Some of the bus bars and stuff like that. I don't know. I guess we'll find out here shortly. All right, so right here is my 24 volt connection for the shunt trip. I'll go ahead and disconnect that so we don't have power up there anywhere. I lost the fuse. Do have to disconnect the Batrium power real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Where are you at? You're right here. All right, so Batrium is disconnected. I don't wanna blow that up again. So right down here, we have the Batrium shunt and some extra wires, which we can go ahead and disconnect. Shove all these wires down here, over there. And since we're back here, I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect each battery pack from each other. And, and then we'll close it and we'll flip it around. Pop you open. Alrighty, down here we have the Batrium and all the wires and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect him. Let's see something else we haven't done in a long time. Boom! Pretty badass. Do that to each shelf, by the way. 
Boom. Boom. And of course, boom. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Nope. All right, anyway, let me uh, put all this back in here. We're pretty much done with this right now. I am gonna leave all the Longmons sitting here connected to the packs for right now since I don't need them at this moment. And then close this so the cats can't get in there. And then we are done until tomorrow. Oh wait, I need to put the batteries back over here. But look how much room we have now. It's freaking huge. We can put all sorts of batteries over here. We can put them right up on the wall. Nice and compact. It's gonna look fan freaking tastic. All right, anyway. And then we can put this guy right over here. How about that? That'll, that'll work for now. Alrighty, that's going to do it. I think we're looking good. We got a ton of room in here to work with now. Everything's gonna be nice and compact, which I think actually I'm gonna move this big battery later on. I might either mount it on the wall right here or I'm gonna mount it on the wall right there depending on how much room my other stuff takes right over here. And yes, this, all of this will be much cleaner later on. Alrighty, there you go. Alrighty, there you guys go. Video one is complete. I know it really wasn't much to watch other than disassembly, but that's okay. We gotta start somewhere. So, uh, everything is disconnected. We have a ton of room over there to start the new Powerwall 2.0 project. Seems like a lot of peas. All right, so if anybody is interested in a video on the old battery packs, I guess it probably wouldn't be much other than maybe like a quick overview and possibly a capacity check, maybe on each battery pack, because I have a battery charger over there, if you can see it. I haven't even used it yet. I could do that and check the capacity. Because if you weren't aware, I actually never capacity checked each individual pack. All I did is added up all the cells and came up with my capacity of 226 amp hours per pack. So we could see how accurate that is and or if there's any degradation for the last couple of years of use. Again, it's not gonna be anything crazy, but if anybody wants to see a video of that, make sure you put that down in the comment section. All right, well, that's pretty much all I got. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you wanna see the new lithium iron phosphate Powerwall 2.0 build. Like that smash button, and I'll see you on the next one. Um, uh, um, um. Hey there, good morning. Everybody wants to see you. Are you sleeping? All right, well, I'm gonna go work on a video, okay? If you wanna come down, come on down and help. All right. <laughs>